Ladies and gentlemen, boxing fans, we move on to professional bell number three of the evening. We are penciled in for six three-minute rounds. We are in the heavyweight division. Judging this contest, Chris Condon, Roy Saunders, Paul Williams, when the action gets underway, referee in charge, former world champion, that is Phil Holiday. This contest is proudly brought to you by Sheriff Electrical, the number one choice in Townsville for all of your electrical needs. Sheriff Electrical, where service just happens. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first tonight, the man boxing out of the blue corner. This man wears the all white trunks this evening, tip the scales, 100 kilograms neat. Professional record reading, two fights, one win, one loss. Trained by Steve NG Boxing out of the Matrix Boxing Gym. The man from Ashmore, Gold Coast, originally hailing from La Baja in Tonga. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome for Frank the Tank Amato. And now, ladies and gentlemen, across the ring, introducing his opponent, this man boxing out of the red corner. This man wears the black trunks. He has a white and orange yellow trim. This man tipped the scales 117.2 kilograms. Professional record reads perfect. Two fights, two wins, both big wins coming by way of knockout. He's trained by Chris McCullen boxing out of the Logan Boxing Gym. The man hailing from Brisbane, Queensland. Ladies and gentlemen, the next crossover superstar. This is Tavita Panga Jr. The family looking on. Fighters, I've been through the instructions in the change room. Let's have a nice clean fight. Listen to my instructions at all time. And good luck to both of you. Touch gloves. Davida Pangai Jr. Frank Amato, the upset king. Looking to create the biggest of the night over a guy that is two and oh. Watch for the Pangai left hook if he Sights an opening. He will jump on it. We are scheduled for six three-minute rounds. Andy Raymond and the Tower of Terror. Dempsey McKean calling your ringside action on this Battle of the Reef live from Townsville. Amato in the white. Pang Guy, the bigger of the two. The black and the gold. Nice double jab there. Yeah. He's a natural athlete and his learning curve is a steep one, but geez, it's been good. His body shape has changed dramatically in, I guess, the last 12 months, because it's been almost 12 months, about 11 since his last match. He's a solid build, isn't he, old Pangai Jr.? Oh, yeah. I think his legs are about the size of my torso, <laughs> and I'm not a small man either. Amato on the front foot. Land a good combination there. Yeah, he certainly did. Mato over the top, looking for a right hand. Oh, so Vita Pango right with hand. a straight right hand. He's a push off here. He might have him buzzed. He's a push off, separate, land a couple more big shots. And go again. Yeah, exactly. Give yourself Keep that some momentum distance. rolling. Frank done the right thing now by holding on. Vita looks amazingly composed. I was just about to say the same thing. Looks comfortable in there. Not phased by anything. Tight guard, wearing some shots. Slowly edging forward as well. A lot of people looking on this. It's, it's been a big news story. Tavita Pangai retiring from rugby league. Walking away from well into oh. six figures. Great combination. From Pangai, the left right was a beauty. Set it up with the jab, followed through with the right oh. hand. Big shots. Tell you what, Frank Amato is not really too phased. Every time he gets buzzed with a, a couple yeah. of big shots, he just comes back with a good three, four punch combination. It's good to, to show your opponent that you're not hurt, you're still in the fight, and you're not going to go down easy. Wow, again, Pangai 
He does not look anything like a guy that's had two pro fights. Not at all. He's picked this up quite quickly, hasn't he? Just needs to keep that guard a little bit higher as he's separating. Last thing you want to do is when you step back and you drop your hands and, and your opponent fires back straight away. Pangai aggressive, but it's a, a real controlled aggression from Tavita. Great fight so far, though. He is looking to back up the talk with the walk is Tavita Pangai. I'd like to see Pangai Jr. go the body a little bit more. Amato's got a nice, tight, high guard, so once again, if you can bring those hands up a little bit high and then dig that body. Well, sounds end of round number one. We are scheduled for six. Good exhibition of heavyweight boxing to start the fight. That ice bag's in the thing as well, I think. In the bucket. Nice and deep, real deep breath. One more. On the handle back, just on his neck, yeah. Hey, that's pretty good. Cool. The only thing is. We want to use that jab a little bit more. We're looking too much for the Take right a look hand at some of the highlights the from yeah, the opening round deep and that right deep hand deep taken on the shoulder deep. by okay. Frank Amato. And there so many different deep. ways to defend. You can, you can do it with your gloves, your forearms, your shoulders and or your feet. And we've seen a little bit of everything from Frank Amato. He probably has done enough defensively, Demps, not to get 100% of the power from Tavita on him. Exactly. You get the feeling it's only a matter of time. Yes, he, he's, he's kind of walking back, um, you know, stepping away from that power, coming back, taking taking the, the brunt of the force away. You've got to be careful when you come back in that straight line. You know, you want to take a couple steps back and then cut to the left or the right. Make sure you're not continuing in the same straight line. They're picking off, uh, picking up exactly where they left off here too. Little Philip Holiday in the middle of the two men, the three ringside judges, Paul Williams, Roy Saunders, Chrissy Condon. Yeah, you won't have a more experienced uh, referee in all of Australia. Former world champion. Had a good sit down at breakfast with uh, Phil Holiday this morning. Give me some good tips, especially after my recent fight. And, um, you know, just what to expect moving forward as well. Nice. Yeah, great Big insight. Yeah, passing down tips from generation to generation. One of the great things about professional boxing in this country. Very close-knit community. Often at war with one another, but a very close-knit <laughs> community. Got that right. A minute into round number two. Davida's just got to keep a cool head here. Doesn't need to be over enthusiastic. He, he also has to keep a bit of a lid on his emotions. And we saw that as a rugby league player. He, be, he becomes emotionally invested and then he crosses the line. If he can control that emotion, anything is possible. Yeah, it's the last place you want to uh, let your emotions take control. You know, a, a thinking fighter is a winning fighter. And, you know, one of the, before my previous loss, the only other loss I had was my second ever MMA fight. It's the only other fight I fought with anger and uh, vowed to move away from that and, wow. and never fight like that ever again. And it was a good learning curve so early on in my career and good to experience that and, and know that is the complete wrong way to fight. Pango. Moving back in towards the middle of the ring, letting the hands go there. A little sloppy. Oh, and Amato with a couple. And that's what I'm talking about, having the hands low after you land your combinations. You're open to those big shots straight away. And Tavita is going back in that straight line, as you said, which you try and avoid at all costs. Oh, that's a beautiful body shot from Tavita Pango. But I tell you what, Frank Amato didn't buckle. And he's got Steve NG, Jacob NG from the Matrix Gym in the blue corner, barking instructions, barking confidence, a little Frankie Amato. Definitely. Very experienced corner with the Matrix Boxing Gym. Trained there for many years. Yep. Steven NG's a hell of a trainer. Uh, Pangai Jr.'s landed some massive shots here. And oh, the trainer is fighting back. The upset king. The crowd is absolutely loving this, and I can't blame this. This is what we all want to see. Back and forth action here. This, quite simply, is just a face-punching contest. Oh, wow. And Amato with a straight right hand. Pangai smiles and welcomes him back into the corner. Both boys tough as anything here. This is, this is a great, turned out to be a great fight here. Tougher than one of Grandma's stakes. 
Just when you think Frank Amato might have seen enough, he comes back and lands some great punches of his own. Big deep press. Oh, ground, mate. Got to keep those hands up. You got to move that head. The catch counters are there, man. You're landing shots in there. Remember, if he touches your right elbow, right hand. Touches your right elbow, right hand counter. Put the hook behind it. Yeah? You all right? Feel good? Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. No problem. Summer round yeah, number two as we can observe the statistics in the bottom right corner and both guys throwing it at good yeah. numbers so far in this fight. We are just two rounds in. Fatigue, if it hasn't already, about to start setting in. And some of these punches, they're also going to slow you up because they've been good shot stamps. Oh, these are, they've all been good shots. Everything that landed has, has had something good behind it as well. So, yeah, hats off to both boys. Uh, I'm enjoying this, this fight as well, just on the uh, spectator side. And it is hard to um, pick a winner here at the moment. Two rounds in, though, still four to go. Here we go, round number three, six three-minute rounds. Watching elbows, watching heads, asks Philip Holiday, our referee. Over the top, Amato. First real punch of round number three. A nice jab from Pangai. There is something Tavita is doing that's allowing these punches. They're almost counter punches from Frank Amato to be so successful. He's going to come down to conditioning this fight. This is, this is it's a crazy pace for two rounds in. So I think as we start to get into the later rounds of this fight, you know, four, five, and six, who's going to have the better condition? Who's going to be able to withstand those shots and come back with their own? Significant swelling underneath the left eye of Frank Amato. Make that the right eye as well now. Yeah, if I did hear correctly, I did see uh, hear him complaining oh. to Steve about his eye. So he might have sustained a bit of an injury there. Or These body shots, these left hooks to the body from Tavita Pangai, are going to start to take their toll. He's hit two beauties in this round alone. He hit a couple of beauties in the first round. And Amato is leaning into his work here. Tavita trying to turn him and does, but they tangle on the ropes. And Philip Holiday, the referee, says that'll do. We continue halfway through round number three. Sato is just countering every time here. Here we go again. Love it. Just 27 years of age, Tavita Pangai Amato. First sign of fatigue there and the first sign that he's hurt. Oh, Turn. beautiful uppercut. That's why you don't have to load up on every shot. You can just tap, tap, look for those openings, go from there, then land those bigger shots. If you just load up every time, you're going to gas yourself out. Three punch combination from Pangai Jr. Both brothers here in attendance. Big family contingent. Both boys starting to blow now as well. As we almost reached the halfway mark in the fight. They're just tapping away here, having a well-earned rest. None of these punches are, are doing any damage. But while they're actually not locking arms, the referee will let it continue. They've earned this next minute rest. Oh. Pangai now accelerates through his punches. Just no matter what Amato takes, he's just pushing forward every time. He's not phased by these big shots. He's got a hell of a chin on him. Hasn't he? He's what? A bit unsteady here, though. Final couple of seconds of round number three. Big Tavita is marked up underneath and above the right eye, also on the bridge of the nose. Both boys starting to get the battle wounds. What a fight we got. Let's go into the corner with... The former national champion, the little big man, Chrissy McCullen. Okay, this guy's got one last crack, okay? Keep slow breath for me. Keep slow breath, keep. Need you on the jab, in and out. The second you get the chance to set body, you have to set body. Slow breath, slow breath, okay? Don't stay there and wait for the thing, change it up. Let's go, we need to set body, okay? See, the other thing when he's leaning over, bang, okay? Your distance you had over there was perfect. Perfect. Slow breath, slow breath. Try to keep your hands to yourself. You want to stay focused? Yes. We have to stay focused. Round four coming up. Did I win that round? Yeah, you won that round. Yeah, okay. Because cool. you didn't crowd your punches. Yeah, that's right. Good don't, distance. Don't let him rest. Let's go. Punches thrown to punches landed at plus 40%. Yep. There is not a boxer 
on God's green earth that wouldn't be happy with those numbers. Yes, we have seen better punches and better boxers. Don't confuse me. But for their experience levels, it's all relative. They'd be happy with those numbers. We just heard from Chris McCullen setting towards the body. Definitely. 40% is, is, is very good, especially so early on in the careers of both these boys. I think Pangai Jr. needs to get back to throwing those straight shots. He had a lot of success early with the double jab with the right hand over the top. When he starts to get in close and throw those rounded shots, the hooks and the rips, it's allowing Frank Amato to come in and land shots of his own. But if he can keep that long, land those long straight punches, you know, he's going to find uh, he's on the, not on the receiving end so much. Frank Amato, that left eye really swollen now, in particular underneath. And the, the type of swelling it is, I'm suggesting, yes, it's a little bit of face punching, but it's also, I think, probably a thumb in the eye. It's, it's awkwardly swollen. Yeah, definitely. That could be what it's from. It's starting to close up more and more as time goes on here. They've got to be careful of that as we come into the later rounds. If it gets too bad, the ref will wave that off. The doctor will wave that off. Wave that off sorry. It's your lead eye, too. It's the, the eye closest to your opponent's hands, that left eye. Definitely, if I was Pangai Jr., I'd be looking for that overhand right as well because our vision, is, his eyesight's not going to be as good and clear, so he's not going to be able to see that big right hand coming just like that. Tavita's only done four rounds as a professional. Frank's only done six. So at the end of this round, Tavita has doubled his professional output. Invaluable experience too. Don't use the elbow. You heard the call from Philip Holiday. Both boys having a bit of a rest here. The pace has slowed down considerably. Hangar Jr. doing the right thing, just popping that jab out. There's nothing going on. Just stick that jab out, score those points, win those rounds, get that rest. You know, there's no such thing as a rest when you're in the boxing ring. You've got to hide behind something. You've got to hide behind the feints, the jab, stay active, stay busy. Show the judges you still want to win this fight. Amato with a two-punch combination. Again, the counter-punch combination of Frank Amato is scoring. So every now and then he gets his second win. He comes yeah. back to those couple of big shots and looks like he's straight back into the fight. On the front foot, and the crowd cheering. Little Frank Yamato. To beat her back to the body. And you can hear those body shots echo around the Townsville Entertainment Centre. And Guy Jr. needs to step back. Rip that big right uppercut up. As, as Frank's getting a bit tired now, he's, his guard's starting to open up a bit and he's hunching forward, leaning over that front foot. So the balance isn't there. And the uppercut for Pangai Jr. is. Nice shot by Amato. Over the top. And doing just, a bit of head hunting as well. Just like that. He's straight back into it again. Oh, oh big Amato! Shots. Big shots at the end of oh, round he's number rocked. four. He's, oh, to come back at the end of the round. What a round, what an exchange. Wow. Two tough, tough humans. The fight's not even over yet, but this has got to be fight of the night, surely. It's going to be hard to top this. He's tied too. Trust me, he's tied too, Frank. Hold it on there, don't mu hold it on there. Yeah, he's tied too. Yeah? All right, you're coming back with good shots at the end of that round. Big shots, okay? you got to keep that tight guard. Keep that tight guard for me, all right? Go on, fight Frank. Keep catch. OK, well, she might have landed 15 jabs. Don't let him do that, OK? Let's take advantage of him. Slow your breathing. Last round, fifth is round? it? Fifth round? Six now. Six round. Yeah. No, fifth. Fifth, OK. We need to start ripping that body. Don't let him rest. When he's walking back, bugger, you've got to take advantage of that, OK? Yeah. So terrific action from round number four and plenty to be optimistic about for Frank Yamato in the blue corner. As we rip back into it, round number five, five of six. The way this fight's going, I don't think we're going to get a decisive winner until the final bell at the end of the sixth round. Because both boys are just coming back, landing shots one after another. Super close fight. You see by the percentage of their the punches landed, yeah. it's still neck and neck at the moment. Some positive reinforcement in the corner from Steve and Jacob NG to Frank Amato saying, he's tired too. He's tired. I know you're exhausted. But he's tired too. Definitely, and that's, that's always one thing when you're in the fight. You're tired. You, you need to push through. 
but you've got to remind yourself it's a fight. You're always going to be tired no matter what point after first round, second round, fifth round, twelfth round, you're always going to be tired and you just need to be able to push through and you've got to rem remind yourself your opponent's just as tired as you are, if not more. You don't get any closer to the action than you do right here on Stan Sport. Ringside cameras and cameramen bringing you the action like you haven't seen before. Pangai and Amado. Amado wobbled there. Holding on a little. I get the feeling this could well be the calm before the storm. Nice. Straight punches. Pop that jab out. Same with the Martin, he's a double jab and move in. Close that distance a bit and land, then land your bigger combinations and power shots. The crowd buying into this wherever you're watching live around Australia. We hope you are enjoying it on Stan Sport. This is Battle of the Reef, fight number six of eight. Thank God Junior's got control that had head as Amado's leaning in and swivel around and, and pivot off to the side and land some shots. There was plenty of talk at the press conference in the way in between these Racking two, shots. so I don't know if this is battle on the reef or beef on the reef, this fight, but it got personal at the press conference and at the way in. We're definitely uh, leaving it all inside of this ring tonight. Great fight. Each one walks into a right hand again. Got I punished don't... there for, for lunging in a bit. He's not going to do that next time. Needs to I... be a bit more calculated. Work, be a bit smarter behind that jab. Get yep. back to those straighter shots. I don't know how much more Frankie Amato has got. He is absolutely spent, but still firing him away. So he's not consistent with his shots. He, he'll rest for a bigger period during the round, and then he'll come back with about five or six big punches. Pangai Jr. starts to land a couple big uppercuts. And Amato is still throwing him. We are going oh. to a final round. Two Warriors, Ludum, out on their feet, exhausted, tired. One more round to go, three minutes. Who wants it more? There were indications in the first round that we may not see the second. What a job Frank Amato has done here against the odds. Some would say, though, he's in a win-win a position because if you lose, well, you lost to a bigger guy and an NRL superstar and you were only brought in as an opponent. And if you happen to secure that upset, you're the king. Definitely. And, and you know, obviously they're, they're trying to get behind Pengai Jr. So they might want to get a rematch. And with the rematch comes a bigger person. Another opportunity to fight on a pay-per-view card. So, definitely a win-win. Wailing away on the inside, both guys. What a test this is for Tavita Pangai Jr. Fight number three. It's been almost a year since he'd been in the ring. Tell you what, you, you just know what this, this six and final rounds yeah. are going to be like, exactly how we're picking off. Last three minutes... The way this fight's gone on, it's only going to be uh, picking up another notch here. Great body rip there. Wasn't it? A and cracking he a couple body more. rip. And here comes Amato again. Just when we say good shot pain guy, you can almost bet that Amato comes back with a two or three punch combination. Yeah, he's definitely right that he's not coming here to lay down and be the opponent, you know. He wants to get to the A side. He wants to win this fight. He's definitely shown his true colours. He's, he's a tough man. Native of Christchurch, New Zealand, now based on the Gold Coast, is Frank Amato. Steps back towards centre ring, giving himself a little bit of space. That eye is banged right up of Frank Amato. Davida doesn't look too bad. He's got a mark underneath his right eye. Shot from Amato! He rips in with a three, four punch combination. Trying to finish the fight. The amount of shots Pangai Jr's eaten and taken to. I'm surprised he's not a bit more busted up. Oh, oh big lip. Uh, it's wow. a trademark left hook. Pangai with the left hand almost to, exclusively here. Needs to push away here. Amato's doing the right thing by holding on. 
Davidis cramped for room. Amado holding on as best he can, but he is out. Wow. A minute ten can to he go. It? He deserves to oh. go to the final bell. Straight Frank back. Amado. Referee Philip Holiday having a good long look at this. Amado somehow still on his feet. And you know he's got a bit few punches coming back any second now. Oh, right, right hand. hand. Amado. There's some shots oh. left in him yet. What a cracking heavyweight fight. This is on Battle of the Reef. Is, I think we had about a minute straight there of non-stop punching. Ridiculous pace for heavyweight division as well. What a lonely spot this has been for 20 minutes for these two athletes. Just one man standing in front of them, trying to dish out as much pain as he can while you try to return the favour. Amado's it, hands can't get any lower at the moment. They're both exhausted, leaning over the ropes here. 10 Last seconds 10. to go. Let's throw them for 10. Frankie Amato and Tavita Pangai Jr. Oh. This has been a oh. belter. What a what fight. What a fight. They've definitely gained the respect of each other after that fight. Wow. They are standing yeah. at one. They are cheering wherever you're watching. Live around Australia. This is Stan Sport. And this is turning into quite the night. The crowd is definitely earning their money's worth tonight. What a fight. Fight of the year contender. Oh, baby. Frankie Amato, what are you made of? <laughs> Steel and iron, if I had to guess. You couldn't knock him down. And Tavita Pangai Jr., he tried. He tried his best. He tried to dish out that Pangai punishment. And this man, the unheralded Frank Amato, kept hey. standing there and then kept throwing back. You're gonna have to get the ice bar sorted for tomorrow because there are gonna be some sore bodies getting around. I wonder what Tavita's thinking at the moment. This boxing <laughs> thing, not so much fun. <laughs> Exhausted. And both men, both families, their corners and their sponsors should be so proud because as violent and as aggressive as it was, it was fought in tremendous spirits. Both guys putting on a show what it means to be a professional. Definitely. Putting on a show is exactly what they've just done. They've had to dig deep, both of them. They've uh, definitely understood what they're made of now. Dig deep and uh, put a show on like that, eat some big shots, come back with bigger shots of their own, and um, yeah, hats off to both boys. That was a hell of a fight, it really was. I think everyone as a collective here, the Townsville Entertainment Centre has sat back in their chair after 20 minutes of leaning on the front. They're taking a few deep breaths and thinking, what the hell have we just seen here? Let us now head centre ring and make this official with Stevie. Ladies and gentlemen, boxing fans here in Townsville, it is an absolute must that we give these guys one more round of applause. What a heavyweight contest. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of heavyweight boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. Judge Paul Williams scores the contest 57-57, a draw. <laughs> judges Chris Condon, and Roy Saunders respectively score the contest 58-56 and 59-56.
which means we have a majority decision, which goes to Red Connor! To be the Pangai Jr. Points decision, Victor. 59, 56, 58, 56. And a split at 57. I'm not going to argue with any of them. No, very close fight. Hard to score at times as well. Yeah. Good to see both boys embrace after the fight. You know, there's a bit of uh, talk behind um, in the lead up to this fight. And it's what it's all about is earning that respect of each other. Once once the battles are uh, done, you know, uh, both boys are in there doing the same thing, you know, trying to provide, trying to push themselves to the limit. And um, there's nothing but respect after, so it's always good to see. Tavita still sucking the big ones in, yeah. and uh, and rightfully so. Frank Amato enjoying his time centering. Wow. I think everyone's entitled to take a long, deep breath. What a fight that was. Pangai Jr. now 3-0 as a pro.